Welcome to Chamber Chat on the Street. This is Dr. Vale Garvin, President and CEO of the Central Bucks Chamber of Commerce. I am thrilled to be outside in this beautiful gazebo at Peddler's Village. And we have with us today Mayor Larry Keller, the Mayor of New Hope, Bob McGowan, who manages this beautiful place, and Glenda Childs has two bookstores, one here at Peddler's Village, and of course, in downtown Doylestown. Larry, I'd love to start with you. First of all, thank you for being here today. Talk to us about New Hope, what you've seen, what innovative changes some of the stores have made. Bring us up to speed. You know, a lot of things are changing. And of course, a lot of it is predicated on whatever the governor decides to do, right. so it's changing. And it can change weekly, and sometimes it could be daily. monthly, but and sometimes <laughs> daily, as we found out today. But the big thing we did is, is as a borough, as municipalities, we decided that we need to give every restaurant an opportunity, since they're limited in what they can have, like 25% capacity in the restaurant, that we have basically, we closed off Mechanic Street every Friday at uh, 5 o'clock until Sunday night at 10, so that... Uh, the four restaurants are on that street can bring tables out and also serve drinks, which is interesting, on Mechanic Street. The, the state, the LCB, said that was permissible. So um, we, we've helped quite a few different bars and or restaurants increase their capacity by seating outside. And that, that has helped a lot and still maintaining social distancing. So uh, as far as the restaurants goes, that's what we've done. As far as the businesses, we're still, uh, uh, the retailers are now open, regular basis. So that's just transitioning. But when we went from red, where we were almost three months, where nobody was open. And once we went yellow, we started to see the change and we started to see the people coming in and buying. And uh, once it went green, uh, weekends are just, Absolutely, the town's the town's been packed on weekends, and I think that uh, the, the stores that I've talked to, the shop owners, uh, less sales but bigger sales. So I think that the, the certain the clientele that are coming are spending, and 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 that's encouraging. Uh, and I've seen it even in my store. I have less foot traffic, but. But sales sales. Are, sales are bigger there. That. I wonder Even, why that well, is. part of it is, I, I'm, it personally, because I sell garden uh, items as well, but uh, I think having been hemmed in for three months, uh, I think that they, they spend a lot of time on their properties, and, yeah. and I think that's why Lowe's and some of these other big stores are, are seeing a change in sales because people are now paying more attention to their properties. But having gotten out, I, I think that uh, we're doing just fine considering and Good. and the Logan Inn when that finishes it's still months away and, and the River House, the old Odets is probably two months away and when that happens we're going to be bringing another group of people in and receptions for weddings. I, I think we'll see a significant change and some of the stores are changing as well. I feel so badly for the Bucks County Playhouse. Any word on when they'll be able to? Well, that, that I didn't even want to go to the Playhouse is yeah, a, is a situation so. all of its own, because I'm on the board. Uh, uh, we're just very limited. Uh, yeah. Michael Smirkanish had his uh, anniversary uh, celebratory radio uh, <clears throat> taping there at the Playhouse uh, maybe a month ago, and, and I understood they were sold out, well, 65 seats. Yeah. So the Playhouse normally can seat 450 people, so at that point, yeah. 65 was sort of ascertained as the limit. So we're not going to have anything major there at this point. They, they do depend on the deck, the restaurant that's, that's a great restaurant. That. So we, yeah. we've, they're now seating outside as well. And so, it, and, and Stella's next door. So it's coming along, that's but uh, we just have to play it by ear and, and whatever the, uh, the governor, whatever wow. changes he makes, then we have to adapt to it. Well, I live close by, so I'm going to come down on Friday night. Please, <laughs> please, please. For sure. Bob, Peddler's yes. Village. Oh, my gosh, this is beautiful. What changes have you made? I know you've made a lot. Well, first of all, thanks for being here. I'm very happy we could do this outside with such yeah. nice people. Um, we've made a ton of changes. 
uh, this thing hit the village, this virus, with uh, tremendous force in mid-March. And so we initially, were, you know, we were taken aback, and then we quickly pivoted then to what we called a, uh, we called the virtual village. So we went to all our store owners and said, okay, who's doing things online? Who's selling online? Who's got websites? So we put the virtual village together right away and started to see, you know, our store owners making some money, selling some things online. And then once we got that in place, we, we probably immediately went to the Department of Health uh, and we've worked hand in glove with them about what do we need to do to make the village safe. And Dr. Dansker is a joy to work with, isn't he? They, they were fantastic. Yeah. And, and they continue to be. Every time we have a question yeah. or any issue at all, we can go to them and they're quickly getting back to us. So um, from that, those conversations, we've developed really, I think, pretty comprehensive uh, safety program and protocols. You'll see if you walk around, you'll see signs about keeping your distance, uh, wearing your mask. There's hand sanitation stations all over the place. Um, we're requiring masks indoor as the... Uh, the governor mandated. Uh, outdoor, uh, we're recommending the masks are worn and they're actually required outdoor if you can't keep six distance. feet of distance. Right. If you can, then like us, you know, you don't have to wear a mask. So I, we, we look at the village right now as, as it's 42 acres of beautiful landscaping uh, with space for really a lot of people to come out, walk around, enjoy. Uh, grab a meal. We put tents out for seating at Earl's. We put a tent out for seating at uh, the Cock and Bowl. We have outdoor deck at Buttonwood Grill. So there's just plenty of space uh, here at the village to grab something to eat. Including your walk around food. We have, we do. <laughs> we have on the weekends, we have uh, basically uh, to go food in it from yeah. a tent. It's, it's really nice. We have tables all over the village and you can sit down and enjoy a meal. Um, but, of course, the, the strength of the village is our, our stores. Right. And uh, we have Glenda here who's going to talk specifically about uh, what they're dealing with. But our store owners are, to me, uh, you know, they're, they're our, our kind of our heroes because th this has been a really challenging period for retailers. I'm not sure everybody really truly understands how difficult it is in the retail business um, when something like this happens. You know, we were shut down for months with very little sales. Uh, then we went to yellow where you could, you could have people indoor, um, but that was with mitigation, so you couldn't have a lot of people in the store. And even now, um, but what we're finding, as, as, as Mayor, Mayor Keller mentioned, um, we are finding less volume, less number of sales, but uh, higher average ticket prices. So people are spending more. And in conversations with our, our guests, um, there are a lot of local folks who want to support the local businesses, and, and they're, they're telling us they, they'd rather come out and spend a little bit more to get the experience that you get uh, here in the village. So, I mean, you can come to Peddler's Village and walk around and enjoy everything and not spend a dime, which is kind of nice. We're kind of a park for people. Um, but if you do want to come and you do want to support uh, you know our local store owners. Uh, we really, we really appreciate it, and it, it's it's gone so well that's, so far. That's really great to hear. Yeah. Is the kitchen store open? I've taken up baking, <laughs> homemade cookies, homemade cakes. Absolutely, well, cookery wear. <laughs> well, we also just to tell you, which is really you know I'm very proud of. We, we're adding two stores during really? the pandemic. We have two new stores coming in, which you think, I think I got to believe we're one of the only shopping centers, at least in the area, maybe in the country, that are adding a couple stores. So what we have uh, Cigar Cigars coming in down at the courtyard, and we have Mama, Mama Hawk's Kitchen coming in, and they're, they're a, uh, that? that's, that's going to be our new coffee store. Okay. They do coffees, all kinds of different varieties. They have breakfast sandwiches, they have uh, personal pizzas, they do all kinds of things. Cool. Uh, so we're excited about that. Both of them we're hoping for in the next couple of weeks. Well, congratulations. Thank You're you. going to have an opening we can come to? Sure. I'll bring my big blue scissors. <laughs> Absolutely. You're always invited. Thank you. Thank you. And Glenda, I love the fact that you have 
a, a bookstore that's independent and you've grown it through the years and now you have the one year. Tell me how you've been managing through this time, if you would. Yeah, so um, luckily our Joylestown store has had an online presence for many, many years. And so that was a tool that was already in place. And as soon as um, we were able, we got that up and running again. We had to close down for those first two weeks, but I have to say the PPP loan was very valuable for us. Good. To bring as many staff back as we possibly could. And that kept the web orders going for us. And it also gave us time to redo the store, basically. We were doing our research, um, talking to staff to see how they would feel safe. What could we do to make them feel safe? So against our kind of mission statement of being a gathering place in the community and a place where people can share ideas and hang out, right. we took out all of the sofas. We took out most of the furniture. And so we are, you know, all set for social distancing. We have lots of space now. It's a very clean look, which is actually quite nice. Um, but we do have the plastic um, acrylic mm -hmm. barriers at all at both stores, all of our registers. So that keeps our staff safe. So our staff kind of guided us what was good for them. We knew would be good for the customers. Too. That's great. What about here in New Hope? And Publer's Village, yeah. um, same kind of thing. We well, actually, we were closed for three months and um, opened yeah, with everyone hit. else June fifth. Um, certainly, the Doylestown store allowed us to take orders from both stores, um, so that was very helpful. But um, it's been, I think, focusing on since we've opened out here, I've been impressed with the customers that have come into both stores. Great. I know. And I know you I know. mentioned the same thing that the, the customers are spending more. They are. So mm -hmm. less transactions, but more dollar per, per transaction. So I think people are, were already kind of on board with shopping local. They had already, yeah. you know, That's great. yeah. And so it's, it's been great. That helps all the local businesses. It does. You know, one thing I'm hearing from all of you is the fact you're concerned not only about your employee safety, but the safety of the people who are coming to buy in your places of business. Mm -hmm. yeah. It both goes together. And so much thankfulness for the staff that were willing to come back because mm -hmm. I know not all stores had staff that were able or willing to. And so that's right. that was a that's huge another start. Good point. Right, but now that the customers, too, are feeling brave and coming in. That's a nice way to put it. Does anybody else have something else to say before we close up this chapter of Chamber Chat? Is there anything you can think of? Now, again, I... What I, about I, the hotel? Do you have hotel rooms open? We do. We're... we're the village is entirely open. Okay. The hotel never really closed, um, but while there was a, a lockdown, generally speaking, we, we didn't push to, to, to really right. sell rooms. That's one of the challenges we have. We, we would love to have festivals again because we're known for our festivals. I know. Um, and we, we can't. So right. we're trying to take our festival, which was one weekend a month, and spread it over all four weekends. Oh, that's a good idea. Right, and we want, because yeah. we want people to be comfortable. Some people are afraid to come out if they think there's going to be a big crowd. Right. And I get it. You know, we, we're trying to make it comfortable and safe so people can come out uh, and enjoy, you know, the beautiful grounds here. So. Well, you certainly have beautiful grounds here. So thank you for thank hosting you. us today. I have to share with everybody, we have a book club at the Central Bucks Chamber of Commerce. And Glenda is going to be the person presenting and talking about the book. And it's called Leave Something on the Table. So look at the... Central Bucks Chamber website, it's in October. Come out and be part of and we may do it virtual. It may be Absolutely. virtual. Yeah. So in fact it probably will be. <laughs> Thank you for being with us again. And another chamber chat will be coming your way. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of you.